I'm Paolo, and uh, this presentation uh, is about uh, um, the following question. How fast does Linux uh, drive storage when uh, I.O. must be controlled? And the answer is, unfortunately, very slowly. If any of the usual uh, solutions for controlling I.O. is used. Uh, to introduce this problem, let me recall some common cases where you need to control I.O. Uh, these cases are services like uh, web hosting, uh, video or audio streaming, cloud storage, containers, virtual machines, entertainment system, and so on. Uh, these services uh, may need to move uh, data to from storage and may need to guarantee at least a minimum bandwidth and a bounded latency to the I.O. of each uh, client, container, uh, virtual machine, and so on. Um, so from now on, I will just say client to refer to any entity uh, to which uh, bandwidth or latency must be guaranteed, so be it uh, uh, client, container, or whatever, and uh, I will only talk about uh, bandwidth j just for brevity, but of course they are related, strict, uh, tightly related, bandwidth and latency. So uh, I'll show you that without uh, your control, you can provide these bandwidth guarantees only at a very high price, uh, that is throwing away almost all the speed of the storage, even 90% of the speed. Uh, so you do need to control I.O. if you want to do better. But I'll show you that if you use the typical solution for controlling I.O. Uh, that is uh, uh, throttling, then you still throw away speed about 80%, still a lot. Uh, surprisingly, also in this presentation, <laughs> uh, the BFQ IO scheduler comes to the rescue, and it seems to solve this problem for all the workloads that I have tested. All but one class of workloads, the one where uh, uh, IO is mostly random, because in these cases, also BFQ loses uh, most of the throughput. Fortunately, there seems to be a happy ending because I made a one improvement, an improvement, and this seems to uh, enable VFQ to reach uh, 100 or almost 100 percent of the speed of the storage in all workloads. So uh, the first objection that you might have is, is okay, you're uh, speaking about cases where you want to guarantee bandwidth to clients. So if you succeed in guaranteeing this bandwidth to uh, clients, uh, you win. You don't need to uh, fully utilize your storage. Your goal is just uh, guaranteeing bandwidth. You guarantee bandwidth, you win. No. And to show you why, I'll start mm, with, from a common example. So uh, rather unexpectedly <laughs> for you, all of you have an, at least one internet connection, one contract uh, to connect to internet. And uh, if you check your contract, you will uh, find that you have uh, a minimum uh, bandwidth guaranteed, if you have a, a good contract. <laughs> And you also have a limit on the maximum bandwidth you can enjoy, but what you actually get is average bandwidth. And this average bandwidth is usually at least half of the maximum or even more, depends on the time of the day, but for sure it's much higher than the minimum bandwidth guaranteed. Th to give you an example of a low to medium speed contract in Italy, uh, you uh, buy this contract uh, which says that you have uh, 30 megabits per second, which means that you usually have 20 or 25 depending on the time of the day. And if you check the contract, you will see that you have a guarantee of one megabits per second. Would you be happy with one megabits? Probably no. Would you choose a contract that guarantees you five megabits per second, but in which the average bandwidth is just five megabits? Probably no. You prefer the one with 20 or 25 average megabits per second. That's what happens <laughs> all over the world. Uh, so the average bandwidth is always much higher than the minimum. 
So why is the minimum so lower than average or on the opposite? Why is average so higher? Because, uh, sorry, because for virtually all services, the number of active clients is much lower than the total number of clients that may subscribe the service. Uh, so the total bandwidth, the total average bandwidth required by clients is usually much lower than the maximum possible total bandwidth that all possible clients may require. So providers simply size resources on the average total demand. They size the resources so that the average bandwidth enjoyed by each user is high. So all users are happy, all providers are happy because they are not wasting resources. But what happens if you have full load? You are unlucky at a certain time the system, the network is full, fully loaded. Well, you have your contract, you have your minimum guaranteed bandwidth, you cannot complain if, of course, you have at least your minimum bandwidth guarantee. But this happens rarely. That's the bet. This happens very rarely. So this very common scheme that you experience every day uh, is, is also the scheme used in all the other services that I listed in, at the beginning of this presentation. And Linux has mechanism to implement, to implement this scheme. Uh, Linux has I.O. control mechanism to implement this scheme and the classical solution is throttling. There is also a bonus. Uh, with the new uh, block and queue I.O. stack, uh, you can also uh, use the speed uh, of the fastest storage that you can find on the market. Well, we are happy, no, because throttling makes this speed uh, disappear. This is what I want to show you uh, with this demo. So uh, in this demo I'll show you the performance of uh, um, the two I.O. policies available in Linux that are uh, throttling and proportional share. I.O. policies are the mechanism with which in Linux you control I.O. Throttling gives you uh, two types of, uh, can I say, sub-mechanisms. One is low limits, the other is max limits. Um, just for brevity, I call them max limits. So you can say every group, because this policy works on a per group basis, every group must receive at least this minimum bandwidth, low limits. Or every group can receive at most this bandwidth, max limits. With proportional share, you assign a weight to every group, and the group must receive a fraction of the resource proportional uh, to the weight of the group. Okay, so I'm about to show you with this demo. Uh, first, I'll, I'll show you just a result, no, nothing <laughs> live. Uh, just a result to motivate the fact that uh, you need to use these uh, policies um, if you want to provide bandwidth guarantees. With this simple example on uh, an SSD where uh, I just, run, uh, just ran four uh, groups, uh, groups doing sequential reads and one group doing random reads. Without your control, the device reaches a very high throughput, five, uh, more than 500 megabytes per second. But the unlikest group, the one doing random I.O., gets only 0.3% of the total throughput. It's completely choked. So you need to control I.O. And with a demo, with this demo, I want to show you what happens. So I'm about to show you the uh, performance of throttling uh, with low limits and proportional share, both of them configured to guarantee at least 10 megabytes per second to the unluckiest group. And as a comparison, I'll show you also the performance, simulated performance of an hypothetical uh, ideal policy that reaches the maximum possible throughput that can be reached while guaranteeing 10 megabytes per second to the unluckiest group. This is in the bottom uh, window. In the topmost window, you can see the performance of throttling with low limits. In the middle, BFQ, but uh, neglect this for the moment. 
two bars, the first showing the total number of bytes uh, read, the other bar showing the, to the number of bytes read for the unluckiest group. As you can see, uh, throttling does guarantee the 10 megabytes per second to the unluckiest group, but the total throughput is extremely low. We will get back to BFQ uh, later. Hmm? Fundamentally, we have only 20% of the speed of the device used. You can repeat these experiments with my suite. Uh, if you uh, increase the number of groups, uh, uh, try whatever other combination of I.O., of heterogeneous I.O., so for example, random plus sequential, you see the same problems. If you also add writes, you get a one more problem, uh, that is you lose control. Throttling loses control on bandwidth, so it, fail, it even fails to guarantee uh, the, the, um, those 10 megabytes per second to the unlikest group. Okay, so this is all uh, for the moment uh, with the demo. If you are interested in two details, you can find them in this uh, recent uh, LWN article exactly on, on, on this topic. But again, you can say, okay, but we do enjoy <laughs> bandwidth, uh, we do have these services, so how do companies do? Well, they just solve one problem at a time. Uh, I.O. is very complex. Um, it's extremely variable. Uh, you have uh, read, uh, write, uh, uh, sequential I.O., random I.O., synchronous, asynchronous, asynchronous with uh, varying levels of depth, uh, large requests, small requests, writes that cause high latency because of hardware issues uh, in the storage and, and so on. So it's a jungle. And in this jungle, uh, you don't have any strong mechanism to control I.O. So in the end, uh, companies just try to solve every problem when it occurs. Here are some examples. You have a process that uh, monopolizes uh, storage. Well, you throttle it. So you use throttling to reduce its bandwidth. Or you use proportional share with uh, CFQ. These are typical solutions, These are actual solutions in use. You use proportional share with CFQ, which is the scheduler used to implement proportional share with legacy block. And you raise the weight of the process that you want to help and lower the weight of the process that gives you problems. But as I already showed you, uh, throttling kills throughput and loses control. CFQ just doesn't work anymore with modern hardware. It's just not an option any longer. So in the end, when uh, uh, you don't have any other solution, the typical uh, fail safe is you use dedicated storage. You buy performant drives and you use them only for critical I.O. Is this a good solution? Well, it depends. If uh, your workload is perfectly homogeneous, perfectly symmetric, every uh, client does the same type of I.O. with the same pressure, then yes, you can afford the high utilization. But if your workload is only just slightly asymmetric, for example, someone is random, is doing random I.O., then it is very easy to show, and if you want, then I have some extra slides, uh, to show that you can guarantee the bandwidth of the unlucky uh, clients only if you go very, very, very down with the utilization, usually 10%. So you throw away 90% of the utilization. This has little to do with redundancy because uh, you, you say, okay, uh, I have multiple drives. Uh, this is not redundancy. Uh, with redundancy, if some piece fails, you still want to give your service. Here, if some drive fails, the utilization of the other ones goes up and you lose control. This is not something that helps in terms of redundancy. So, to sum up, we have uh, now faster and faster storage, faster and faster IO stacks, but we throw away the speed. 
uh, with throttling, and even more if we use dedicated storage. So in the end, what does this mean? It means that um, you have to buy, uh, you have to use, and then to buy, install, uh, power, maintain, five to 10 times more storage, more resources than those sufficient to provide the actual total uh, bandwidth that you need. Be just because you are not using your storage. Uh, this is even worse with lower end hardware because lower end hardware is lower. So some service levels may become just impossible to uh, implement. Fortunately, as I already said, now BFQ seems to have become able to help in this because in block and queue, the proportional share policy is implemented by BFQ. This means that you give away to every uh, group and that group is guaranteed a fraction of the total throughput of the device uh, proportional to the weight of the, uh, pro of the group. And this means that you have a minimum guaranteed bandwidth equal to the weight of the group divided by the sum of the weight of all the active groups. And it works. Uh, because, uh, just going back a few seconds in uh, the demo, now if you focus on the uh, window in the middle, you can see that uh, the total number of bytes read is equal to the ideal possi best possible total number. And the unlucky group uh, gets uh, its 10 megabytes per second. And this happens also in, with the other unlucky workloads that, of course, I, I'm not going to show you in this few minutes remaining. Um, is it over? No. There's still a problem. Maybe this is about to become a problem of the past. We will see. Uh, probably you have heard this commonplace here. If you have a fast, fast flash storage, just throw away any IO scheduler and uh, everything will be better. Uh, what's the reason for this persisting idea? The reason is, B as for BFQ, is basically that BFQ sucks with random I.O. But from 4.20, uh, uh, you will find an improvement for BFQ that has been uh, um, cured by Jens uh, like yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, and I'm about to show you uh, what happens with this improvement. In particular, in the next slide, I'm about to show you the problems of BFQ with random I.O. plus the improvement, the result of this improvement. How? Uh, with, the, with the graph, uh, showing the result of this for the same test as for the demo, but this time with all groups doing random reads. Uh, I, in, in the graph, the throughput of only one of the groups is reported, and this group is called the target, but it's the same to check the uh, throughput of any of these groups. Uh, and that's all. So let's start. Consider only the uh, left subplot. Here we have the results for throttling with low limits and known as IO scheduler. This line here shows the minimum uh, uh, throughput, the minimum bandwidth to guarantee to every group. So it is at 10 megabytes per second. And as you can see, uh, low limits uh, does uh, provide this guarantee. It actu actually gives much more. And the total throughput uh, with uh, uh, low limits is equal to the maximum possible total throughput that can be reached. Mm, so very good performance. Actually, this is, the prob this is the case for which low limits has been designed and optimized. If you switch to BFQ, <laughs> as you can see, it's a complete dis disaster. The throughput goes away. Fortunately, with this improvement, the throughput comes back. And we are at 10% from the maximum possible total throughput. This is an improvement uh, of 400%. Uh, 
uh, but if you change uh, this uh, target from a random reader to a sequential reader, as you can see, the situation reverses. The throughput with BFQ becomes higher than that with uh, low limits, and if you use this improvement, uh, it is impressively higher. Okay, so we can conclude. So after this last improvement, now it seems that we have a solution uh, to implement uh, services with professional quality because we can guarantee a minimum bandwidth with BFQ. Uh, BFQ also guarantees a high average bandwidth because it always reaches 90 to 100 percent of the total throughput and gives it to the only active clients. And if you want to limit the maximum bandwidth, uh, you just use throttling, and this is a natural way to use throttling with no throughput issues. Of course, uh, and, and this solution seems to be general, standard, because it seems to work for any of the services that I listed at the beginning, seems to be rather clean, and according to my results, it's, it's reliable. Of course, there is no <laughs> silver bullet, because, uh, for example, uh, there is still this 10% uh, gap to fill. And I.O. is a complex beast, so uh, for sure, uh, depending on, the, there will always be corner cases, something to adjust, something to tune. But in this case, it seems that we start from a much uh, more solid ground than just using a jungle of micro solutions that work for that specific case and just break if boundary conditions change. And okay, this <laughs> we made it. That's all. And uh, thank you for uh, for listening. <laughs> okay. If you have questions, yeah. what is the change that you did? What did you do in 4.20 that makes it faster? You mean the improvement yeah. on yeah. I didn't expect this question. <laughs> uh, um, the problem is that if uh, you have a process with a higher weight than other processes, and okay, BFQ serves processes one at a time. So if the, your process with a higher weight is under service, and that process does synchronous IO, and is temporarily without any request, then BFQ plugs the I.O. coming from the other processes. Because it's the only way to guarantee uh, bandwidth for a, a, a set of reasons, for a number of reasons. So uh, the problem is that doing so kills throughput. This is where the throughput goes down. So my idea was simply to inject in a controlled way, more I.O. from other processes while in plug-in mode. That's the bet, and it seems to work. Yeah. And as I wrote here, <laughs> rather early <laughs> stage, and I <laughs> probably there is some tuning will be needed, we will, we will see. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about uh, you want to be able to tune it, that these sorts of systems are requiring tuning. So I was kind of thinking, why not have most of this BFQ uh, uh, IO control in user space be, and have all, not use Linux at all, basically use DPDK or SPDK and basically, you know, have a, a back-end infrastructure with, you know, a whole bunch of disk and VMware fabric and stuff. Seems like with that, you can get, should be able to get much, much higher utilization than trying to jump, dram everything through a relatively fixed Linux kernel implementation, no? Good point, yeah, probably, yes, yeah. Why not, <laughs> why not, I confirm, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, thank you.